Jim Neighbors, our Gomer Pyle has died. He was 87. I'm John Bowden from Nailsheet.com. He was an incredibly talented man, but he would be the last person to say that. Even during his latter years, he was always humble. He once said, I don't think I'm much of an actor. The only part I've ever played was Gomer. I'm the most surprised person around that I'm successful anyway. He was spotted at Horn Cabaret Theater in Santa Monica by his future co-star Andy Griffith, who knew he had a part immediately for Jim Neighbors. This was the early 60s. Griffith knew that Neighbors would be perfect for the part of the wide-eyed innocent Gomer Pyle for his TV show on CBS. So for the third season of The Andy Griffith Show, the character was created as a mechanic at Wally's filling station in Mayberry, with of course the famous catchphrase, golly. He was on 23 episodes of that Andy Griffith show. And from 64 to 69, he had his own spin-off show with the same character. There was a point, however, that Jim Neighbors thought he'd rather be an entertainer than an actor. Because we have to remember that rich, operatic, baritone voice of his. I remember as a kid first hearing him sing, and I don't know what show it was, but I was like in awe of Gomer Pyle having those singing chops. Hearing him sing The Impossible Dream, which ended up being one of his signature songs. And for years, he would sing back home in Indiana for the opening ceremonies for the Indianapolis 500. He also had his own variety show from 69 to 71, where he had a chance to do it all, act, sing, and just play funny. He appeared on The Steve Allen Show, The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, The Lucy Show, Dean Martin Show, Carol Burnett, Johnny Cash, The Rookie, Sonny and Sheer Comedy Hour, The Love Boat, Knight Rider, and that Andy Griffith reunion program called Return to Mayberry in 1986. There were a lot of acting gigs we didn't even mention. In movies, he paired up with Jimmy Stewart and Take Her, She's Mine in an uncredited role, and a few with Burt Reynolds, including The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas in 82, Stroker Ace the following year, and 1984's Cannonball Run 2. He was born June 12th in 1930 in Alabama which is where he also went to university, where he got a degree in business administration. At one point, he worked answering calls at the United Nations. He married his partner of over 40 years, Stan Cadwallader, in January 2013. Neighbors really represented a very different part of entertainment. Uh, sure, the cliche would say a more innocent age, but it was true. These were TV shows. This was entertainment that left us feeling good after we watched them. We felt joy, which is rare these days. His passing to me personally was a reminder of how fast things move now, of how cutting some comedy shows are in a very negative way. Sure, we have changed as a society and with it, comedy has to change too. Fitting of the times. It was an innocent age back then. I have to say I'm glad I grew up in the 60s where there were much less distractions and much more of this sort of thing to sort of pave the way. Jim Neighbors, one of the good ones. May he rest in peace. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Nailsheet.com.